Hi, welcome. Thank you. Do you want to tell us what you're doing now? Absolutely. Well, welcome. Uh, my name is Derek Jensen. I'm the aircraft handling officer. Uh, and this is flight deck control. What we're doing in here is coordinating the movement of all the aircraft on the flight deck and then down below in the hangar bay. Um, this is uh, just a scale model of the flight deck. It's uh, called the Ouija board. Uh, right now you're standing right here and uh, looking out the window. So if the airplane was really there, you'd be at the back end of the airplane. Uh, what the Ouija board does is it gives us a real-time picture of what's going on out on the flight deck. We put uh, various nuts, bolts, and washers and pins on the aircraft to let us know what type of maintenance they need. For instance, a, a small bolt for low power turns, uh, something like ground idle, a big bolt for high power turns, something above that, wing nut for wing spread, washer for wash. Each aircraft will be represented uh, uh, by a template, so they're all specific for each aircraft. Um, as the airplanes move about the, the uh, flight deck, there's a sailor that sits right over here and will move them around the Ouija board. And they're talking to another sailor that's up on the island uh, now. It's called sound powered phones, which are no more than the soup can with the string between it running through an apple bar. Uh, once you get understand how to, to read the board, you can come in here in about 15 minutes and know what you need to do in the next three hours or so, which is really how far out we're, we're, uh, we're working. Uh, the problem we have is just because this airplane fits here on the board doesn't mean it'll necessarily fit out there. And if you knock our pins off and you don't put the pins back right, you screw us up for hours and hours and hours. Because the object is to park an aircraft in a spot where it can refuel, reload, and do some minor maintenance and go flying without having to move it. Now, we have <coughs> we have about a half dozen or so people that work in here, but about 75 or so that work out of here. So at any given time, this room is packed full of people all having their individual conversations and uh, whatnot. So you have to, it's pretty good uh, multitasking, three or four conversations at the same time, talk on the phones, talk on the radios, and all that sort of thing. Some of the folks that work in here down at this end uh, are the grapes. Anywhere you go on the ship, it's purple, that's aviation fuel. Down at this end of the board would be the uh, <coughs> CAG maintenance rep. And he and I are deciding what airplanes are getting the maintenance, what airplanes are going flying, and that sort of thing. And then back of the boards behind you would be the uh, ordnance. They're keeping track of all the, the ordnance that is out there on the flight deck and whatnot. So, so where do people, where do the airplanes start and where do they end? Well, they'll start from, from any any one of the spots you see out here on, on the flight deck. And we usually keep uh, somewhere between 55 and, and 49. They'll launch off. Uh, any one of the four catapults that we have, two up here on the bow, two out here on the waist. Um, and then we'll just move them around to feed the catapults to keep the launch going. When we're using four catapults, we can put an airplane in the air about every 30 seconds and we can recover one every 45. Hey, John. We were told that one time an airplane went off the side and then in the water. Uh, they have over the years. Yeah. Possible to salvage the airplane? No. I'm not trying to get them out anymore. They all sink pretty quick. Oh, you don't even pick them up? Not unless there was some reason to do an investigation on it. And, and most of the time we're operating in, in water that's so deep and so remote that it would be cost prohibitive to go get them. And there's enough, everything, all, all the flight ops is filmed. So, uh, you know, you can tell what's going on from there. I am a second class uh, bosun mate in the United States Navy here. Um, basically what I do is uh, pretty much I train, direct and supervise uh, 150 seamen, including a bridge team, a helmsman, uh, lookouts, um, phone talkers up here, and uh, Lee Helmsman. Uh, Lee Helmsman and Helmsman are people who uh, drive the ship and uh, control the speed of the ship. Also, uh, we're in control of uh, underway replenishments, which means when we go alongside and get fuel, we actually get the hoses over here and everything like that. 
pretty dangerous job. The reason why the ship is haze gray is because of us and everything like that. Um, most of the seamen that come into the Navy um, that don't, that are, that are not designated with jobs, they usually come through us first and get a dose of what leadership really is and what leadership is about. We are always up here. Um, I have a helmsman up here who's uh, young. I say our youngest helmsman is about 18, 19 years old. And uh, we train them, supervise them, and uh, just make sure the watch team is pretty much ran and make sure the ship is ran. Bosa made is an old tradition, about uh, a little bit over 200 years old. You know, uh, it's the first rate in the Navy. Uh, probably, I would love to say it's the best rate in the Navy, but uh, it's pretty good. This thing symbolizes, this is a Bosa mate's lanyard, okay? It symbolizes who we are. You'll see many of us walking about the decks with these on, all right? Um, pretty much, it carries our uh, Bosa mate's pipe, okay? I got this when I first picked up rank, when I got my first crow, okay? I picked up third class, and this one was officially made. It has my name done in it, and I've had it for about two years now, okay? Um, pretty much, it started back in the day, way back in the day, back in the early 1800s or something like that, when the Navy first came about. Um, pretty much, back, in, back on wooden ships, um, there, the oceans, and swells would hit. Um, sailors would have to go about the decks to do things, right? But we couldn't yell over the ocean and the swells and everything like that. Wow. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah. that, that meant all of that? Um, right here, this just meant, um, this is piping over the side. If, some important person was to come, like that president of the United States. My uh, sailors would stand in a rank and they would salute while I pipe and everything like that while he's walking through the center and we salute and everything like that. That's called piping the side. But there's calls for, there's bosun calls for everything. Uh, my name is uh, Alexandro Wiggins. Um, what do I do? I am originally from uh, Republic Dominicana. Um, I am an operations specialist. OS, uh, I'm an OS2. Uh, what I do is pretty much what you see uh, on the movies, the guys playing with the radar, so that's what I do. Yeah? Oh, cool. Uh, I do um, a lot of stuff with the surface picture all the ships that are around us, stuff like that, making sure that certain contacts and yeah. uh, stay far away from us, stuff like that, pretty so much. So you're in that dark room. Though. I'm in the dark room. Yeah. Have you guys been in there already? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's where I work. <laughs> oh, okay. The direct representative of the CO. We have a multitude of radars, both air search and surface search, and fire control. Uh, basically, air search is self-explanatory, it searches the air. Uh, surface search goes after smaller ships or submarines, and the fire control radars, uh, they direct missile um, engagements. Our, our job is to monitor the incoming traffic or threats to the ship, and if they meet criteria to stop those threats from attacking the ship. It's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, everybody in the Navy and everybody in the military has the right and obligation of self-defense, which means we not only are supposed to defend ourselves, we have to defend ourselves. Uh, because it's a little bit of a misnomer. We're not just defending us in here, we're defending the 5,000 folks on board the ship where we go on deployment. So we have a, a basically three weapon systems to defend ourselves. We have a medium range missile called the ESSM, a short range missile called the uh, rolling airframe missile, and we have an assortment of guns on the flight deck as well. So we, we have a, just a, a little bit of a, a structured defense type of deal where we can pretty much defend ourselves. The real job is to get aircraft off the deck and let them defend us and, and take the offense on any kind of weapons. So we don't control the aircraft from here, uh, but we do monitor them. And if we need to, we can capture them to come help us. In other words, if we deem there's a threat to the ship, we don't have to ask anybody's permission. We can take whatever aircraft that's flying and bring them back to us so they can help us defend the ship. Because if there ain't no place to land, it doesn't really matter how important your mission is. You ain't coming home.